Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your Brains Player 2. This is where we look at games more in depth that might not have a scientific side to them, but actually have more to teach us. So today I wanted to talk about the game that is my favorite game, The Talos Principle. Talos Principle is my favorite game, and that is probably a weird choice, but it's because it's so much more than just a game. Sure, it's a puzzler, and I got a soft spot for puzzles, I'm not gonna lie, but if you play it as just a puzzle game, you're gonna miss all that the game has to say. It uses solving simple puzzles as a way to talk about huge concepts, like what our relationship is with God, and what does it mean to be human? So throughout the game, you have a voice in the sky telling you what you can and cannot do. And this voice's name is Elohim, which is an ancient Hebrew word for God. And the main point of the game is to defy Elohim. He tells you not to climb a tree, to escape out into the real world, because in the end, it will be the end of him and the end of you. And to me, that was the first fascinating thing that I thought about playing Talos Principle. What our relationship might be with the creator. Now, I don't know what your relationship might be with God or gods, or if you even think there is one. But I think as a concept, God is really fascinating. And the question of how do we relate to him, her, it, whatever God may be, is a great question to explore. Now, Talos Principle's entire point is that we really become human when we defy this God-like figure in our lives, when we start making decisions on our own and leaving the safety of an all-powerful creator's realm. It's kind of similar to the Adam and Eve story. And if you think about it, the tower in the Talos Principle is a lot like this tree of knowledge. It's something that was ascended and eventually granted knowledge, but also caused a separation between the relationship of humans, or in Talos Principle, the robot that you play, and God, or Elohim. Now, these are open-ended questions that have no real answer, but they are interesting to debate, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of lively discussion down in the comments. You know, be nice to each other, you guys, please. But the more concrete thing that the Talos Principle asks is, what does it mean to be human? And this is actually a question that we're going to need an answer to, and within our lifetimes. So once machines develop intelligence, and I mean real intelligence, the ability to think and solve problems creatively instead of just crunching numbers, then what? Are these things like humans? Do they have rights? Can they vote? Do we have to ask permission before we turn them off instead of just hitting the power button like I do with my PC at home? These are all questions that the Talos Principle brings up. And the way it does it is by making you a machine that is trying to achieve human intelligence. You've both got the knowledge of human history thanks to a database left behind, but eventually by solving these problems over and over and over and then having the ability to say no to a god figure, this machine passes for human. Now you may be saying it's not human because it doesn't have a soul, and now we get into a whole host of other questions. What is a soul? Is it a tangible thing? Or is a soul emotions like love and fear? Now, because I'm more empirically driven and I've never seen a soul or smelt a soul or touched a soul, I don't really believe that there's something inside a human that maybe a machine won't have. So instead, I might focus on emotions being what defines a soul. Well, that raises a whole other host of questions, like what really is an emotion? And to me, it looks like an emotion is just a really complex instinct. Things like love or fear are things that we develop after millions of years of evolving to recognize that somebody who's beneficial to us is somebody we should keep close and somebody who is maybe negative for us is somebody to stay away from. These are things that there's no reason a machine can't develop as well. So I ask again, when a machine is as intelligent as us, what do we do? And you know, we might not have to wait that long until we actually find out. So get a head start, think about this now, go ahead, discuss it in the comments. And we have a Talos Principle episode so you can check out exactly what AI really is and how it's being developed. Thanks guys for watching and don't forget to keep on playing.